Good morning. Today we will have a brief discussion on the management of class 3 malocclusions. As for the learning outcome, at the end of the lecture, you should be able to identify the etiology of class 3 malocclusion and also formulate the treatment plan for class 3 malocclusion. So what is a class 3 malocclusion? So this is one of the least common types of malocclusion you will come across and it is prevalent in 5% of all the cases exhibiting malocclusion states. So according to the angle, class 3 molar relationship refers to a condition where the mesiobuccal cusp of the upper first molar occludes between the mandibular first and second molars. Also, uh, you have to remember that uh, the above classification is uh, a typical class 3 relationship. However, uh, the lower molar can be in varying uh, relationships with the upper molar. And also, you need to know that uh, this is one of the easiest classifications you can identify on a patient, yet it is quite difficult to treat this malocclusion state. Here are some of the etiologies of class 3 malocclusion. Heredity, unilateral or bilateral hyperplasia of the mandibular condyle, any occlusal prematurities, at enlarged adenoids, uh, habitual forward positioning of the mandible, and any premature loss of deciduous molars. So one or more of these can lead to a class 3 malocclusion. And uh, you can see uh, concurrent uh, features in uh, class 3 malocclusion patient as well. Now coming to the features of a class 3 malocclusion, you can see that the patient exhibits a concave profile. There will be a prominent chin, which is easily noticeable. Also, uh, the patient exhibits a vertical growth pattern. Uh, a class 3 molar relationship, anterior cross bite or you might notice edge to edge bite. The upper arch can be narrow or crowded and the lower arch can be a broad one. There might be posterior cross bite to varying degrees, spacing in the lower arch and also presence of anterior open bite or deep bite. So these are some of the features you will come across and will help you in identifying a class 3 malocclusion. Also, you might see another kind of a class 3, which is known as pseudo class 3 or a habitual class 3. And this is a type of malocclusion wherein uh, there is a presence of uh, occlusal prematurity which results in the patient folding the mandible forward, which uh, over a period of time becomes a habitual position, leading to an appearance of class 3 malocclusion. Also, these patients might exhibit a forward path of closure. So when you're examining the patient, you have to be cautious and look for this particular uh, issue or problem and try to understand if the patient has a true class 3 or it is a pseudo or a habitual class 3. These images uh, show the skeletal features uh, contributing to the development of a class 3 malocclusion. So if a patient exhibits retinopathic maxilla, so you can see that the patient might have a class 3 presence of a prognatic mandible is also um, a predisposing factor for uh, a class 3 malocclusion and both a retrognatic maxilla and a prognatic mandible that is a combination of these two can also lead to a class 3 molar relationship. So when it comes to the treatment, uh, how will you go about treating these patients? So recognizing this uh, kind of a malocclusion state at an early age will aid in intercepting the abnormal skeletal pattern and also reduce the severity of the developing malocclusion. If you have already missed that, then the patient needs other forms of treatment uh, because uh, you might uh, notice that these malocclusions are characterized by anterior cross bites, 
which is uh, a resultant uh, effect of retarded maxillary growth wherein uh, the maxilla is locked within the mandible and also the occlusus forces on the mandibular incisors exerted by the maxillary incisors in crossbite uh, encourages the continued forward growth of the mandible. So you have to keep all these things in mind before you initiate any kind of a treatment. So if you do notice a class 3 pattern developing in a, a young individual, it is better to intercept and treat the patient at a younger age. So correcting a class 3 is quite challenging. So it depends on uh, the growth level or uh, if the patient is growing or non-growing and the treatment mechanics depends on that. So if it's a dental uh, class 3, you can uh, uh, use fixed orthodontic appliances to treat uh, the malocclusion as needed. If it's of skeletal origin, you will have to use various techniques to treat uh, class 3 malocclusion and it becomes quite a challenge. You might uh, use a simple face mask and uh, you might need to uh, sometimes intercept uh, or uh, uh, modulate the growth uh, or else if it's an ongoing patient, you have to uh, camouflage by extraction of certain teeth or else the best approach would be to surgically manage these patients by either uh, maxillary advancement surgery or mandibular uh, setback surgery or certain times the severity of uh, skeletal mal relationship is uh, too huge you might uh, as well as subject the patient for uh, a combination surgery which is maxillary advancement and mandibular setback So growth modification, that is interception during growth, can be undertaken to uh, treat any uh, underlying skeletal mal relationship. Uh, growth modulation procedures uh, will utilize Frankel 3 appliance, reverse activator, chin cup with high pull headgear, reverse twin block, class 3 by nature, reverse headgear with maxillary intrusion split. So one or more are uh, uh, there are several options uh, available for treating class 3 but the rule remains the same to intercept as early as possible so that you can reduce the uh, treatment duration and also inhibit the growth of uh, the mandible thereby uh, correcting the model relationship at an earlier age. However, if you have missed the opportunity of treating a patient during their growing years, you can um, utilize extractions and uh, treat these patients by camouflage. So if a class 3 malocclusion which, ex uh, which uh, is characterized by reclined upper incisors and upright lower molars, you can extract premolars and uh, give the patient uh, better uh, functional occlusion and better aesthetics. Also, if you come across lower arch length problems and anterior crossbite, here too, you can subject the patient to uh, a lower first premolar extraction and uh, give them a better uh, occlusion. So that is camouflage and that's uh, some of the techniques uh, utilized for treating class 3 malocclusions. So here are the treatment objectives. So it will be the reduction of crowding correction of the reverse overjet, correction of incisor overbite, and correction of molar relationship. So these can be achieved by uh, removal or uh, fixed appliance therapy. Uh, reverse overjet correction can be achieved by the anterior movement of the maxillary incisors and posterior movement of the mandibular incisors. Uh, and also the incisor overbite correction can be achieved uh, by the vertical movement of the maxillary and mandibular incisors to varying extent depending on the severity of the anterior overbite. And the molar relationship can be corrected either by maxillary, uh, that is the mesialization of the maxillary molars and distalization of the mandibular molars. Continuing with the treatment options available for a class 3, if you see a patient has a pseudo class 3 malocclusion, 
then you will eliminate the occlusal prematurities or any other uh, uh, contributing local factors, thereby establishing a normal intermaxillary relationship. Also, if the patient has an anterior cross pipe, lower anterior inclined planes or removal of lines with expansion screws can be uh, used to treat this anterior cross pipe. Uh, the presence of a posterior cross pipe will require rapid maxillary expansion. And uh, in uh, worse scenarios wherein uh, there is uh, a skeletal class 3, you will have to subject uh, the patient to either a maxillary advancement or mandibular setback, which can be bilateral sagittal with osteotomy. Or in uh, certain uh, individuals, you might need to do a combination of both. So with that, we've come to the last slide of today's presentation. Today's presentation has been quite a brief one as we've only discussed on the management of class 3 malocclusion. So however, we have uh, covered uh, the etiology of class 3 malocclusion, uh, the clinical features of class 3 malocclusion, and also a bit on pseudo class 3 malocclusion. How do you treat these malocclusion states uh, if they are of dental origin, if they are of skeletal origin? So I hope you've uh, had some uh, brief idea on all these uh, treatment aspects which uh, you can provide to your uh, future patients. So with that, we shall wind up today's lecture. Thank you so much for listening.